Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Loch Ness Dinosaur Everybody knows the Loch Ness Monster is really a dinosaur who's managed to cling to life for 66 million years while all its relatives perished. At least, that's what people say. And for good reason. The Loch Ness Monster is an uncanny doppelganger of an ancient creature known as a plesiosaur. A plesiosaur was what you might call a seafaring dinosaur. It was a marine reptile that lived 100 million years ago and looked identical to the eyewitness descriptions of the Loch Ness Monster. It had a long, snake-like neck, four huge paddles for limbs, and a body like a fat lizard. There were even two distinct types of plesiosaurs, ones with a longer neck like Nessie and other plesiosaurs with shorter necks. But there is one thing that's always baffled the experts. If the Loch Ness Monster really is a dinosaur living in a freshwater lake, how is that possible? As far as scientists are concerned, plesiosaurs only lived in salt water. They lived around the world's oceans for millions of years, evolving into over 100 unique species. They've never been thought of as lake animals, though, especially since they were so big. According to experts, plesiosaurs could reach dozens of feet long. But recently, everything we thought we knew about plesiosaurs changed. Researchers have now discovered plesiosaur bones on the bottom of a riverbed from 100 million years ago. New evidence from Morocco shows that 12 different species of plesiosaurs were living in the river region. An abundance of both teeth and bones shows that plesiosaurs likely developed the ability to live in fresh water. This means that, scientifically, the Loch Ness Monster really could be a plesiosaur, and there could even be one living in a small Scottish loch right now. But probably not. Most scientists will tell you there is no chance the Loch Ness Monster is real, never mind that it's a dinosaur. But until that entire lake is drained and every last living thing in it is inspected, there is no verifiable way for anyone to prove that Nessie doesn't exist, or that she's not a dinosaur. What do you think about the Loch Ness Monster? Let me know in the comments below. And now for number 9. But first, it's shout out time. I want to give a big thank you to TXC Gara and Kyle for supporting this channel. Thanks, guys. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like these. Number 9. The Monster with the Third Eye. Paleontologists from the UK recently finished their study of a magnificently preserved fossil discovered in the Czech Republic in the early 19th century. The fossil is of an ancient trilobite, a prehistoric monstrosity that looked like an oversized woodlouse. Trilobites were scaly prehistoric bugs, and they ruled the world for nearly 300 million years. They came into being over half a billion years ago, and while there have been plenty of specimens found of different kinds of trilobites, this newest one is exceptionally strange. Scientists claim to have found a third eye in the center of the animal's forehead. They discovered what is known as a median eye, which they believe was present during the trilobite's early larval stage. What you might not know is that median eyes are found in every type of living arthropod. An arthropod is any invertebrate with an exoskeleton, joined appendages, and bodies that come in segments. All arthropods have median eyes that grow in the center of their foreheads and look shockingly like human eyeballs. Yet despite trilobites being so present in the fossil record, paleontologists had never found evidence of them having median eyes before now. It's been 150 years of investigation, and this is the first time scientists found proof of the third eye. Paleontologists from the University of Cologne and the University of Edinburgh investigated the fossil together. It's a species of trilobite called Alacoplura coniniki, which dates back 430 million years. The specimen is fascinating because part of its head was already scraped off. This revealed three dark oval spots inside of its forehead. These dark spots appear to be the remnants of multiple third eyes hidden underneath a transparent carapace. Scientists are having a difficult time understanding what this means for the animal. In most modern cases, the median eye is a single eyeball-like structure found on the head of lizards. It's typically connected to the pineal gland and acts as a photoreceptor. 
detecting changes in light. Number 8. The Dragon of Death In Argentina, the prehistoric skies were ruled by a creature the size of a bus. It was the Dragon of Death, with wings so wide they blocked out the sun. It was a flying reptile that ruled Argentina from its perches high up in the mountains. This thing was a fierce predator like an eagle, only as scaly as a reptile and about as terrifying as a fire-breathing dragon. The Dragon of Death was found by scientists on a dig in Argentina. They were excavating an area in the Andes Mountains in the Mendoza province when they came across the 86 million year old remains. The fossil belongs to one of the biggest and most dangerous pterosaurs that ever existed. You might remember pterosaurs from the Jurassic Park movies, but this is an entirely new species. It was so big that its wingspan stretched over 30 feet, which is unprecedented for a prehistoric flying hunter. It lived 20 million years before the asteroid impact and may have been one of Argentina's top predators. Flying predators pretty much had no competition 86 million years ago. The Dragon of Death could have easily hunted anything it wanted and didn't have to worry about other flying carnivores. This was a time long before birds, when the only animals with wings were slobbering reptiles. Pterosaurs had characteristics that were reminiscent of a bird, but they were extremely different. They flew like birds and acted like birds, but they were cold-blooded just like dinosaurs. The Dragon of Death was given the scientific name Thanatos Draken Amaru, and according to project leader Leonardo Ortiz, it's completely different from all other known pterosaurs. Its name is a combination of the Greek words for death and dragon, and it may have even been the closest thing that ever existed to the mythical fire-breathing beast. Number 7. The Mastodon Scientists recently discovered something fascinating about the ancient Haudenosaunee indigenous group that inhabited the Red Hill Valley region of Ontario, Canada. Between 1999 and 2004, archaeologist Ron Williamson led a complex excavation here, and he and his team discovered evidence of ancient indigenous settlements from 13,000 years ago. Most of the evidence was quickly covered up by the Red Hill Valley Parkway, and the area has changed a lot since. But the discovery was still documented, and we now know there were people here a very long time ago living in makeshift towns. Recently, over two decades later, another discovery was made here. Researchers found tools that were used for hunting and butchering mastodon near the Red Hill Valley Trail. Archaeologists suspected the tools were used for butchering, but couldn't confirm it until the tests came back positive for mastodon blood. Ron Williamson says it's always been known that mastodons lived in the region. Scientists have always suspected they were hunted by early humans beneath the Arctic Circle in Canada. It was only recently, thanks to the mastodon blood, that scientists were able to confirm their theories. Settlements near the shores of Lake Ontario sent out hunting parties, not just to take down the caribou, but to kill and butcher massive mastodons. This takes us back to a very old controversy. We know that mastodons and woolly mammoths went extinct about 13,000 years ago. Although, there is some evidence to suggest the final mammoths disappeared in Siberia just 3,600 years ago. While climate change has often been used as the reason for their demise, it does seem likely that humans had something to do with it. Finding such ancient tools covered in mastodon blood shows beyond any doubt that humans were butchering these magnificent creatures. It's possible that in North America, hungry humans hunted the mastodon to extinction. Number 6. Fossils in a Sheep Field Scientists recently uncovered fossils of an unknown prehistoric monster in the middle of an unsuspecting sheep field. Researchers were excavating a vast sheep field in Wales when they came upon fossilized remains from 460 million years ago. That was during a time when Wales and the rest of the United Kingdom was completely covered by an ocean. And while scientists have yet to identify the fossils, they think they've discovered a new species. Researcher Joseph Botting from the National Museum Wales made the exciting discovery during the lockdown in 2020. 
and it was on his last trip after lockdown started that he found some fossilized tentacles. This discovery was remarkable because finding soft body parts preserved in rock is nearly impossible. These weren't very big creatures, with one of them only being 0.1 inches long. However, they were exceptionally strange. One of the tentacled animals was named something I can't pronounce, which roughly translates to bramble snouts in Welsh. It had a spiky nose and was part of a weird family of ancient animals called opabinids. These were marine creatures that came into existence during the Cambrian explosion, which occurred half a billion years ago. This was a time when complex life forms first appeared on our planet in mass numbers. For tens of millions of years, life on Earth diversified and the foundations for all the animals alive today were made. This was also a time when alien-like critters began to evolve in the ocean. Most opabinids were primitive organisms with somewhere around five eyes and all kinds of appendages. But the ones found in the Welsh sheep field don't have any eyes and seem to be covered in little spikes. That's pretty much all we know about them right now, but if you look at them under a microscope, they resemble Cthulhu monsters. Number 5. Tiny Dinosaur Arms An international team of scientists, including researchers from the University of Minnesota, discovered a new dinosaur. They found the remains of a creature dubbed Meraxes Kigas, a giant meat-eating machine that could provide clues to answer the age-old question, why did large carnivores have such stubby arms? For example, Tyrannosaurus rex and Carcharodontosaurus both had huge skulls and small arms. Through the years, scientists have drawn up lots of weird theories for why titanic predators had puny arms, but nothing has ever been proved 100%. These small arms may have been for mating, or they could have been leftovers from bigger arms, but nobody really knows for sure. But now, thanks to the new discovery of Meraxes higgas, scientists may have finally figured it out. The oversized carnivore was discovered in Patagonia in 2012, and for the last few years, scientists have been busy analyzing the specimen. That means extracting the bones, connecting the bones like a giant puzzle, and comparing the bones to those of the other dozens of similar specimens. They finally concluded that Meraxes higgas belongs to the same group as Giganotosaurus. These were both some of the largest predators the world had ever seen. Meraxes higgas wasn't the biggest, but it was still a formidable monster at 36 feet long and with a weight of 9,000 pounds. It lived between about 90 and 95 million years ago during the Cretaceous period. Peter Makovicki was one of the scientists involved in the study. He said the team was surprised to see that the body plan was similar to that of the T-Rex, yet these animals belonged to entirely different families. They were on different branches of the carnivore family tree, and yet they both were extremely big and possessed dinky little arms. So what's the reason for that? To find out, scientists took a detailed look at all the major predators of the dinosaur age to track skull growth and arm shrinkage. They found that all three major families of theropods evolved the same way. Their heads got bigger, their teeth got sharper, and their arms got shorter. Scientists weren't able to determine what their arms were used for, but they believe that detail may be insignificant. We know the arms got shorter as a result of the skulls getting bigger, and so they likely didn't even need arms. There may have been no primary function for them at the time. Their upper limbs were likely no more useful than skin tags. Number 4. The Human Ancestor A bizarre-looking microscopic organism was discovered by researchers when they analyzed 500 million-year-old fossils in China. The creature, which was called Saccharitis, looked kind of like an angry purple minion. The ancient animal was covered in small spikes and resembled a wrinkly purple potato sack. It had a large mouth surrounded by prickly spines and gaping holes, but oddly enough, this creature had no anus to expel waste. Saccharitis was microscopic and was uglier than most tiny organisms of its time, which again was 500 million years ago. For a while after its discovery, scientists were hailing it as one of the earliest human ancestors ever. 
If this assumption had turned out to be right, it would mean every living person can trace their history back to a wrinkly purple sack that was small enough to fit on your pinky fingernail. But scientists were wrong. This tiny creature wasn't the earliest human ancestor, but it was still really strange. When the animal was first found, researchers thought the holes in its face were pores for gills. This was a primitive feature of the deuterostome group, extremely early organisms that would later give rise to the earliest human ancestors. However, a closer inspection of the ancient fossils found in China showed that the holes were merely the pits caused by broken spines. This means that Saccharitis wasn't an early human ancestor, it was just a weird animal with a mouth and no secondary hole to push its waist out of. It also had a weird series of rings around its mouth and may have been an early ancestor of nematodes and arthropods. Number 3. The Demon Duck In prehistoric Australia, there were demon ducks that laid eggs the size of watermelons. It's terrifying, but it's true! In 1981, scientists discovered the slightly burned remains of a group of eggs that were warmed up on cooking fires 50,000 years ago. These were extremely primitive hominins sitting around a fire in the wilderness of Australia, cooking eggs they'd stolen from nests. Many of the eggs were identified as those of emus, but there were a few even bigger specimens that belonged to an unknown bird. Researchers were stumped because the eggs were enormous and were obviously very old, but they were seemingly unidentifiable. But with a bit of research, scientists finally came up with two possibilities. The eggs either belonged to an extinct group of giant turkey-like birds called progura, or they were from massive duck-like creatures. Now, after all these years, scientists finally have the answer. A recent new analysis using sophisticated protein sequencing technology has solved the riddle. Researchers use the protein sequencing tech in combination with AI to identify the eggs as coming from Australia's last thunderbird, Genjornis newtoni. Its nickname is the demon duck because it was such a frightening bird. Just picture a duck that's almost 7 feet tall and that weighs more than 500 pounds. It was a beast of bone and feather, with thick muscles and an intimidating beak. It was a mega duck, one that could have easily killed a human in single combat, and it was so strong that it could have wielded its beak like a sledgehammer. Given its incredible size, it's no surprise that it laid such monstrously big eggs. Each egg was about three and a half pounds, which is the size of an average melon. Perhaps the most surprising part of all is that ancient humans messed around with these giant birds in the first place. For over 40,000 years, before the rise of Mesopotamian civilizations, indigenous Australians were eating these demonic ducks. However, we don't have evidence of indigenous people physically hunting the ferocious birds. Instead, these primitive hunter-gatherers only stole these eggs from their nests. Still, imagine how brave you'd need to be to creep into that animal's nest and steal its babies. If they were anything like emus, Chances are they could sprint at lightning speeds and peck your eyes out. And get this, humans were busy helping animals go extinct long before complex societies formed. Scientists have suggested that human hunger for giant bird eggs pushed the demon ducks into extinction. Humans may have robbed so many eggs that Gignornis newtoni could no longer procreate and went extinct. Number 2. The Last Dino Supper Scientists recently used x-rays to look at the last meal of a prehistoric predator. Researchers from the Australian National University studied the fossilized stomach remains of a plesiosaur named Eric. I told you about the plesiosaur at the beginning of the video as being almost identical to the descriptions of the Loch Ness Monster. But what I'm talking about here is a little more personal. Scientists used the newest technology to look underneath Eric's skin at what was left in his stomach when he died. They were surprised to find the remains of 17 different kinds of fish inside the marine dinosaur's belly. Clearly, it had an insatiable hunger for seafood. The research was published in a prestigious Australian journal for paleontology. The team of scientists say finding 17 fish in a single undigested meal 
shows just how rich life was in the prehistoric ocean. Just try to imagine how many fish must have been around for Eric to get 17 individual species in a single gulp. Eric himself is one of the most famous plesiosaur skeletons in the world. He was discovered in the opal mines of South Australia in 1987. His fossilized remains are 93% complete something that's unheard of for any kind of animal in the fossil record. Previous studies have shown that he lived between 120 and 90 million years ago. The best comparison scientists can make is that the plesiosaur was similar to modern sea lions. It likely hunted large groups of small fish while being at risk of getting eaten itself. Eric and other plesiosaurs were huge, but they didn't have much in the way of defense, just like sea lions. Number 1. An Ancient Footprint Scientists have just discovered some major prehistoric footprints. The prints were made by an oversized amphibian that lived on the planet before dinosaurs even evolved. The researchers had to use drones and 3D scanners to detect the footprints, but it was well worth it. Finding dinosaur footprints tends to be exciting, but in South Africa's KwaZulu natal province, there are footprints from even more interesting ancient beasts. David P. Groenwald from the University of the Witwatersrand and his colleagues scanned a site of prehistoric activity using drones and 3D technology. This was how they detected tracks and imprints left by a crocodile-like amphibian that lived 255 million years ago. The tracks were left along what was once the shoreline of the prehistoric Karoo Sea a body of water that was likely a tidal flat or lagoon. Researchers pinpointed footprints and entire body impressions from where the amphibian laid down to rest. Scientists were literally able to outline the physical indentation left behind by an animal a quarter of a billion years ago. They even found tail marks from where its huge tail swished over the ground. Simply by looking at the marks in the earth, Researchers were able to determine how the creature moved. It was very similar to a modern crocodile's movement, and it likely had its eyes on the top of its skull to peek out over the water as it wriggled its way across the sea's shallow bottom. If you're wondering how an imprint could last for so long, it's because Australia's terrain is largely prehistoric. This patch of desert was submerged for millions of years. Then, when it finally became dry land, nothing ever grew over it. The imprint has remained the same because the ground hasn't changed the slightest bit. Thanks for watching! Which of these bizarre ancient creatures is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up for more! See you next time! Bye!